Alright, we're at Filsters facility. Did I say that right? Yeah, sure. Is it like Filster.com? Yep. Alright, and uh, this is John. What's up, everybody? John. How's it going? Philadelphia native. Yep. He knows what good food's all about. Yep. Uh, I got my uh, HK USP Compact 40, and uh, John is going to make a custom holster for it, and we're going to show you how it's done. Awesome. Right. Talk about it whenever you want. This is how they start out. This is a sheet of olive drab Kydex, right? Yep. No, we're not putting the kitchen counter in. <laughs> Although we could. So, so what's the thickness of this? This is 80 thousandths of an inch, give or take. Sometimes, okay. depending on how they roll it, it's a little closer to, uh, you know, there's, there's a little bit of variation. Sometimes, you know, if you're making a bunch of holsters, you'll start to notice, mm -hmm. like, small variations in thicknesses between batches. But generally speaking, they're, uh, they're pretty consistent coming from the factory. All right. Uh, so that's how it starts out, just like yeah. a sheet. A big sheet of plastic. Yeah, I figure we go with olive drab. Everyone's got a black. Everyone does blacks. So we do something more interesting. It is an HK. We've got to make it special. Yep. And so what do you just oversize the cut? I do oversize the cut. Um, depending on how quickly you heat it, um, depending on the shape of the gun, what will happen is that a, piece, a square piece of Kydex going in the oven won't be square coming out. Um, and the, the larger the piece is, the flatter mm -hmm. the flat space is. Because it's like a, it's like when you put a tablecloth over a table, you can get like wrinkles at the corner. Right. But the more you spread it out, the less you'll get wrinkles. So I tend to okay. use a little more Kydex right, than so I need oversize to. oversize it. Yeah, so I oversize it so it comes out a little bit nicer, even if I do waste a little bit of material. I think and, it's And you don't important. use gun molds, you use the actual gun um, most it, of the time. As much as we can. Okay. Um, we find, um, there are there can be variations in the specs on the blue guns and there are times where we'll order one and then we'll have nothing but fitment issues so what we've been doing is we've been trying to at least stick to either guns in person or guns that we own personally okay. so um, what we what we do and I'll show you um, is we will take a blue gun and alter it and mock it up okay so for example I mean those of you who are familiar with Glock know that while stuff like the 26, 19, and 17 are all really similar, mm -hmm. there's a, there are small differences between the 26 and all the other ones. So what we'll do is we'll modify a blue gun so that it will be more universal. But you know, you obviously can't. You're not. We're not going to hack up one of our guns to do that. So we'll use a blue gun, build an accurate replica mm -hmm. that'll fit all these things, and then do our uh, final testing and fitment with an cool. actual gun. Yeah. I like that color there. Yeah, it's it's really nice. I wish like Glock would make the frame that color. They make it green, but it's too light green. I wish they'd make it dark like that. It looks so good yeah. with black. You know what? I kind of I kind of have like a really soft spot for those flat dark earth 19s, mm -hmm. but I know I'm just gonna like demolish it. As <laughs> I get it. All right. Well, that's the first stage, and then uh, we'll cut off for now, and then we'll go to the st second stage. Rob, what are you doing? I know. All right. So the next step is uh, he lays that sheet of uh, Kydex in that oven there. It's pretty much like a toaster oven. On what's that, 200 degrees? Um, what we do is we increase the temperature slowly over uh, a period of time so that the material doesn't warp. Okay, and that's, that just gets it flexible so you can work with it? Yeah, it basically goes from being a hard sheet of plastic to being something that's more like a big fruit roll up. Okay. Speaking of fruit roll ups. <laughs> you hungry already? <laughs> I'm just messing with Rob. <laughs> so you're taping the gun out, so I know you just told me this, but now the camera's on. We're doing a couple things. One, the tape is going to increase the clearance slightly so that the mold isn't excessively tight. Okay. Two, it's going to um, protect the gun during the working process, you know, yes, as we, definitely want that. you know, we don't want it to get banged around in the shop too much. I mean, not that like, I mean, that guy's pretty thrash, but that's my gun. Okay. You know, it's not your gun. I'm not going to do that to yours unless, you know. Unless you want to. Pete's not extremely picky. You can beat the shit out of his guns. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, he's nothing. only a little OCD. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Definitely. OCD. Definitely. That's what Glocks are for. Yep. So that just keeps the uh, Kydex from over molding into all the grooves. Yep. Basically. Yeah, what we want to accomplish is a nice, clean, crisp definition where the gun isn't sloppy in the holster, mm -hmm. but without creating excessive points where like all the different features on the gun can snap. You want it to be smooth and tight, you right. know, 
like now you have a like YouTube channel things. showing people how to do this, right? Yeah, absolutely. We've got an hour and a half video up there. Uh, that is it's, awesome. It's a little more. That's probably did it last January, January 2012, mm -hmm. um, and it's two parts, an hour and a half. Every little bit, every, every little thing you could want to know, and there are follow-up videos. Um, we work with. Uh, bigger companies like Index Fasteners, where we get all of our material, mm -hmm. and uh, they uh, we put together a kit with them. So if you want to get started, um, what I noticed when I got started, and something I heard from a lot of other subscribers, was that they'll order a little bit, and then sort of waste it on the learning curve, and order a little more, and they're not quite sure what to, mm -hmm. what to do. And before they know it, between shipping and small quantities of material, they've spent more money than if they had just bought a whole bunch up front. Okay. So we t what we did is we got together with Danny from Index Fasteners and put together like a starter kit for like 200 bucks, it's a bunch of material, enough that you can like blow through it, figuring out the process, a little trial and error, and uh, uh, get that learning curve down, and still have some left over to make a couple holsters, sell to your buddies, and recoup your cost. So that's... Uh, now, now, normally you guys mostly make inside the waist. Uh, right? Yeah. Um, this is gonna be an outside, right? Yep, yeah, what we started doing was, it's just um, faster, more efficient, more cost effective for us to stick to some of our smaller inside the waistband products. But if, if you get requests for outside, will you do it for these guys? Um, in some cases, yeah. We, what we really like to be able to do is take the time that we would have spent producing a bunch of outside the waistband holsters mm -hmm. and reserve that time for people to come into the shop and get it done custom and in person. Okay. You know, yeah, that's uh, cool though. That's pretty neat that uh, it's custom. Yeah, so what we're, what we're trying to do is offer a line of things that are, are uh, affordable for you to uh, obtain and easy for us to make, mm -hmm. and then the the outside the waistband stuff is a little. We, we want to make it a little bit more special, you know. It's also yeah. like time. I'm, well, I'm working on a gun shop now, so now all I have is inside the waistband holster. So now I need a bunch of outsides because in the shop they want you to expose your firearm due to Definitely. the neighborhood it is in. Yeah, and it uses it as pretty much a deterrent to let everyone know, hey, everyone's armed here. Right. So you need outside. That's the problem. Yeah. And that, now you're using these, using these uh, layers of thin wood. Yep. What we're doing is we're trying to um, avoid having things like the ejection port over mold. So what you'll see is you know, on, a, on a lot of guns, uh, a lot of guns that are built for reliability, the ejection port comes over the slide, mm -hmm. so you so you don't get feeding issues and whatnot. So um, what you'll see is that the ejection port is really large on the right-hand side of the gun, but on the left-hand side, it's a, a small little notch. What we do is we even go so far as to block that out so right. you don't get like excessive uh, scraping inside the holster or any kind of binding. So we, we uh, mask it out a little bit on this side. So it pretty much protects the whole finish of the gun, too. Uh, it keeps the retention consistent and it, and it prevents excessive wear and tear. Right. I mean, we're not like really, 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 really concerned with protecting the finish because we right. assume that if you're going to carry this gun, you're going to beat it to death. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain point at which it becomes gratuitous or excessive or causes functional issues with the holster. We want to be able to manage the retention so that it's in a specific place. So you don't get it and it's new and it's like super tight. And then once you shred the gun in your holster, mm -hmm. then it breaks in. We, we want it to sort of like flex a little bit and wear in in a natural way. I, I had a Kydex holster one time. I swear I'm not even lying. I, I ain't going to say who made it. No, it's not you, Joe. I put the gun in the holster. I could not get the gun out. Could not get the gun out. And I had one in the chamber. So I was, I was literally about yanking it and twisting it. I had to get a pair of uh, Tinsman Weiss snips and cut the holster apart to get my gun out. Oh, my God. He made it a little too tight. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, and you know what? Things happen, and you can run into those issues. And we've mm -hmm. definitely had situations where we've sent something out, mm -hmm. and the customer has been, you know, concerned about how tight the holster is. Just, you know, whenever you get a new Kydex holster, check your gun, make sure it's unloaded. Things, things can happen. Like you put it on your belt, and you know, the holster's made based on like average people. Right. And if you're, you know, larger or smaller than average, when you cinch that belt down, right. you could be clamping that holster around the gun in a really tight way as the material flexes. Oh. So just make sure that your gun's unloaded. Test it a couple times before you put it on your belt. And uh, if it's like hanging up or snagging or doing anything weird, uh, contact the people who uh, who made it for you and they'll and they'll set it straight for you. Yeah, they'll readjust it, right? Yeah. And you know, uh, we have customers who, you know, will get something and say, hey, it's too tight or it's too loose. Um, I mean, that happens. But uh, the situation is that, you know, we build them to the level that you know we like them 
you know, oh. I like everything to be really tight. So this guy's gonna, you know, if you draw real slow, you're gonna sort of front wedgie yourself. But if mm -hmm. you come out of the holster really quick, right, like you Give would, it in a clean jerk comes yep. out clean. And uh, it, well, wow, you know all about that, right? And it'll and it'll uh, <laughs> snap positively back that's in. That's awesome, yeah. But, so, like but some awesome. people don't like it that way. Yeah. And when things are, I like it like medium, you know. Yeah. Just a nice positive lock, and that's good. But that's the nature of things being handmade, you know. Everybody's <clears> got a different <throat> preference. So, so they're like popsicle sticks you're using. Uh, much. Oh, or no, no, doctor, what's the name? Yeah, like tongue depressors. Yeah, tongue you know what? Depressors. These things are really handy. They're great for stuff like, so for example, when we go to mold this holster, this is going to uh, make a big indentation. And what will happen is that this will get snagged in the holster. So we, what, what, like I said, is we want a really nice clean mold without any like slop in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a real thin piece of material and just mask that out. So you get a good definition of the gun. It's not gonna rattle in the holster, but at the same time, we're not gonna have excessive okay. retention. So the key to getting a consistent mold every time is uh, uh, applying a consistent amount of temperature and a cons uh, consistent amount of pressure to the Kydex. Um, so what we do is we use these uh, non-contact thermometers mm -hmm. so we can accurately measure the temperature of the Kydex because this dial is a, is a liar. It'll, you know, it's not even at 300 degrees yet, but the actual temperature of the material is oh, uh, closer to, you know, uh, mid, mid 300s. So we're just gonna pop that guy out, bring it over here, put it in the press, get it lined up. Nice, put the top piece of foam on, kiss your gun goodbye. <laughs> He's gonna crush my gun. No, we're not. It's we, thousand dollar gun. We've never crushed a gun. Mm -hmm. So put the clamps down and uh, crank down. The key is to work fast before the material sheds all of its heat. Right. What you'll notice is that we leave the foam on the top of the ovens because uh, if something's already warm, it's not gonna you know, dump all the heat into the cold foam. Right. So you can get a little bit more working time, a little better definition. So we're gonna crank it uh, give it a couple minutes to cool off. Okay. Yes, we're in the city, as you can hear. Yeah, you just haven't heard any gunshots yet. No, not yet. Or the uh, neighbor's loud car. <laughs> All right. All right. Ready? Go. Okay. So here, we're, here we are. We've uh, uh, finished the mold. We're about to pop it out of the press. Take a look at how it is. The uh, prep and the molding, you know, generally take the longest amount of time because that's where all like the really good precise stuff needs to happen. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take a look at this for the first time. That guns melted. Yep. Yeah. So here's the back. We've uh, done a little work on the back. We've uh, occluded this uh, little piece of the ejection port to make sure that doesn't snag. We've put a little block in here to make right. sure that the uh, 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 slide stop lever doesn't snag. And then on the front, we are looking good. And what you can see here is that we successfully blocked out the uh, rail section that uh, may potentially snag. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and lay it out, drill, cut, and uh, rivet this guy together. So here we are, we've laid out the holster. We've uh, trimmed it down a little bit to make it a little easier for ourselves. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna drill out the uh, rivet pattern and then we're gonna take it to the saw, cut it out, and uh, be on our way. All right. And you got a drill press here? Yep, you got a drill press. Gotta love a drill press. Yep, this one's got lasers too. Yeah. I got a cheap one at Harbor Freight for 40 bucks. <laughs> it works though, it works good. Guess how much stuff we have that's from Harbor Freight? A so lot. much. <laughs> this thing yep. is a tank. Yeah, some of their stuff's good. Some yep. of their stuff's crap, some of their stuff's good. One time Ooh. I had a, uh, a bench vise from mm -hmm. Harbor Freight. Uh, it was back when I was uh, fixing cars. There was like a bolt stuck on a tie rod. Mm -hmm. So we clamp it down in the, in, the, in, in the bench vise, the bolt. We go to turn the tie rod, mm -hmm. and the vise disintegrates like it's made out of sand. <laughs> it's just like made out of pot metal. I, it was, yeah. it, was, it might like have been. a high point. Right. It might have been made out of cookie dough <laughs> okay. for all the good it did us. I'm like, sorry, all you high point owners. But uh, it was like at the end of the day on Friday, and the thing just like turned to dust. It was like the scene where you like touch the mummy and it falls apart. Yeah. You know, it was just yeah. ridiculous. But you know, other things. This thing's from Harbor Freight. It's been a tank. We've one of our buffing wheels, not the skill, but the little yeah. one. I bought, God, close to, close to two years ago. I got it on Amazon. It was like Ooh. the lowest rated, cheapest buffing wheel they Ooh. had. It was like $30 and one star and half the reviews were like, this thing's gonna break. Ooh. We run that thing for hours and hours and hours a day and it does not fail. So. Yeah, like that, some of the stuff's good. You get lucky, maybe you got them. So now that it's drilled out, we're gonna make the cuts. And when I make the cuts, um, I do it with the two pieces together so that I can get the front and the back to match up the way I like. Um, so I'm going to just install uh, 
temporarily just to uh, align it. A couple eyelets. Get a couple of these little tiny A clamps, and then we're gonna come over here to the saw. Turn that guy on. Just gonna make our cuts, man. So we're uh, you're crimping the rivets. Am I saying yep. that right? Or setting, or rolling, or rolling the rivets, installing the rivets. Very cool. Yep. And uh, what we do is we check them all to make sure. Uh, occasionally, if you've got like uh, cheap rivets or like a screwed up die, you can right. they they will split. And what you, what you can see is that some some holster companies will uh, just send them out split. Not that they're weaker that way, because they're certainly not. Um, it's just a matter of like the fit and finish. We right. uh, will pull out split rivets and reinstall them. Okay. Just because it's a. Are you, are you familiar with Ebomi's channel? You're watching. Uh, yeah, I've seen a couple of his videos. Okay. He's a real hard man. Easy. He I'm drinks. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> to insult your boy. your boy. Don't insult my buddy. Yeah, you guys are very, very. Good. He's a character. He did the uh, free AR giveaway. Yes, he did. Was that, that nice? Of that him? was absolutely tremendous. Tremendous. Yeah, I can't afford to do that. I wish I could. Yeah. Well, he gets drunk and masturbates a lot, so. Well, I mean, who doesn't? I don't think he knew what he did. What he gave away. <laughs> right. As long as the rifle's clean, clean, right? Dude, you got nice ink. Where you got? I need to get some. Uh, I got a, a, a couple good things. I got uh, Joey Knuckles over at Art Machine Production doing this cover up here mm -hmm. on my arm. I got another big piece from him on my chest. Mm -hmm. uh, this this one is new too. That's from uh, Max Kuhn. Uh, cool. Fantastic guy. Yeah, nice. Gentle I like touch. This, uh, the detail in this. Did you notice that my King of Clubs has AKs on him? He's not holding clubs. Oh, that club. is freaking sweet. Yeah. Check that out, little AKs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well, I, I like this part of it. So, yep, so the, the, all the edges are buffed. It's cut uh, out. Yeah, we did. We, we uh, do the complex uh, edges first. And then what we're going to do is we're going to match sand the remainder of this, yep. uh, clean up that edge and buff them up. And then we're going to wash it, uh, wash all the grit out, uh, put a little curve in it, and install the belt loops. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little fold into the holster and we're going to uh, test the retention and whatnot, maybe get that dialed in the way Pete likes it, and then we're going to put the belt loops on. And maybe do a little bit more tweaking after that. So what's the heat gun do? The heat gun allows me, you see it's got this uh, nozzle on it, it allows me to heat specific areas of the holster. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat it basically along the line that I want it to um, uh, contour at. Uh, you just use a clamp and so a you piece of wood. You, so you use that tweaks it. Yeah, this is this is just for tweaking. Okay, gotcha. So what I can do is you can see that the way the nozzle is, I'm directing the heat away mm -hmm. from the rest of the holster. I'm just focusing on the area that I want to heat. I got it clamped tightly in there. I'm applying a little bit of pressure so I can feel when the material so starts you, to give. So what do you give it like a uh, slight curve? Yeah, a slight curve because otherwise it'll be flat and uncomfortable. All right. I am round, so you need to right. curve it more. <laughs> like an egg. Yeah. Like a peel on the neck. Oh, yeah, look at that nice cool. angle you got on there. Oh. Yep. So you want to make sure when you curve it that it's not so curved that your belt loops aren't going to allow the belt to go right. through. Right. I, uh, I know what you're talking about. You know, depending on who, who you're making it for, you can adjust the amount of curve, yeah. you know, for like a... Uh, oh, it's nice. It has that, you know, it's not that people care, but it has that... Has that leather grain look to it, the yeah. orange peel texture. Yep. This makes it look nice. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, I mean Kydex has like people say that Kydex doesn't have any soul or any character, but I think yeah. once once you start getting familiar with it, it like the the, the, the tactile sensation of the material yeah. is is cool. looks, really it has pleasant. Like a vinyl look to it. Cool. Yeah. Alright, almost the thumbs almost ready to go in so what we're doing now is we're adjusting the retention. We were able to successfully block out any there, anywhere that was sna that would snag. Mm -hmm. So we're able to manipulate the retention of the holster by just increasing the amount of indentation that we apply here into the trigger guard to give it that positive snap. Whenever we make an adjustment, we want to do it on the back because obviously no one's going to see the back. And if it looks, you know, like you've uh, adjusted it, you know, or if you like lose a little bit of definition on the back, that's okay because the front is kind of the. Uh, the showcase area. So now we've got a little bit oh, more yeah. snap, per and we're snap. perfect. Yeah, you can adjust that snap. Some people have a, like a, a more intense 
hold, so you would just put more heat on it, shrink it up more. Right, or you know, if you if if you obviously this is worth consulting with the person who made your holster because you know it's always worth it to uh, uh, see what what they recommend, or maybe they have a policy whereby you can send it back and uh, have it tweaked. But if you've got a holster that's like real old, or maybe it's inconvenient to ship it back, you can take a hair dryer, put it on a low setting, and just sort of like gently heat this area with the gun in there with the gun in there right. and uh your unloaded gun in there of course unloaded. and uh just apply a small amount of pressure there once it gets nice and hot you just use your thumb and what you can do is you can trap that trigger guard in there a little bit more so now you get a perfect positive this snap is perfect yep. all right now we're putting the belt loops on nice uh thick what do you call it, gauge or mill uh Thickness gauge. Thickness. Yeah, gauge. it's yeah. a hundred and twenty-five thousandths. Okay. Uh, which, nice, nice yeah. and heavy duty. That's an eighth of an inch, right? Yes. Yep. And uh, we install them with uh, the steel hardware uh, and these little rubber grommets. Uh, here's a tip for anybody making your own holsters: we use rubber grommets of various thicknesses for uh, a number of different things. So we'll use one thickness for a regular outside the waistband holster. If we're using it, making a light bearing holster, we'll install taller screws and taller grommets on the light side so you can clear the light through it. And then for um, things like these uh, magazine carriers, we'll use like a really tall uh, grommet in here for the adjustment. Now, uh, you can source them and it can be really expensive. Um, and then you've got a big wide variety of uh, different kinds of things you need to keep in stock. Or what you can do is you can get 5 16 automotive hose. And this oh, stuff yeah. this stuff will last 100,000 miles under the hood of a car. And if it can do that, it can be a rubber grommet. That's so you cut, you, you cut it to whatever length you need it to. This stuff is durable and weatherproof. And, you know, I mean, it goes under the hood. It's good stuff. Okay. So it's not as though it's like some cheapy, cheapy compromise. Uh, I've, you know, I've fixed a lot of cars with this sort of thing. That's a 5 16 internal diameter. That'll fit like all your screws and posts. And you can That's use a good it. Tip. Yep, and you can use it for uh, uh, your rubber grommets and increase the quality of the holsters. And what's yeah, nice yeah. about having a rubber grommet in here, it applies a little bit of tension, helps keep the screws from backing out in the event that your yep. constant pressure on the screws. In the event that your customer doesn't take yep. your advice and lock tight the hardware. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, it's five thirty seconds. Five thirty seconds. That's an internal diameter. Oh, okay. okay. I guess I guess Mikey's an expert. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this holster is all done. Okay, it's going in there. Ready oh, to go man. in. Nice click and you want to give it a, you want to try it on? Sure. All right, cool. Oh, that looks fantastic. Yeah, it looks great. All right, let me try it on. All right, there's the finished product. This is how I'll, I'm going to carry this HK at work this weekend. See, it's all done by hand. And you've seen, guys, how long this takes to make one of these, so it takes a lot of time for, for, uh, for quality. To be fair, we were BSing a little bit in the shop. Yeah, we were talking a lot. But how long does it normally take to... Uh, uh, to complete one of these. Working at full speed, probably about 45 minutes total, right. you know, if we're doing nothing else. But uh, yeah, when you come down for something custom, you know, it's going to take a little while. We're going to mm -hmm. chit chat and, uh, you know, talk about what you want specifically from mm -hmm. from your holster and how it's going to be. You know, we did a couple little things on uh, Pete's holster. He's planning on getting a uh, extended mag release on there, so we made sure to cut yep. it, that it would clear it. Yep. Uh, and. Uh, you know, dialed in his particular retention and how he likes it and everything. So, yeah, it's good to go. Custom stuff takes a little time, but uh, that's what you get when you come down in person. You know. All right. Nice work. Absolutely. Come by anytime. Thanks, bro.